Hey, how's it going? It's been a while, but Advent of Code 2023 has just started, and I thought we'd take a look at the first part of day one, specifically in TypeScript. You're probably familiar with Advent of Code. It's a set of 25 programming challenges that get released every year in December. And we're looking at part one of day one for 2023. Day one, of course, always the easiest one. And so I figured this might be a good candidate. I don't know if we'll be able to do this going forward, but at least for day one, what if we could actually solve this problem in TypeScript types specifically, not in like the JavaScript part of TypeScript, in the types. It's a pretty simple one. We have some strings that we need to parse here. So our input looks like this. For each one of these lines, we have to parse through the string and we need to find the first digit and the last digit and use those to form a two digit number. In the example of this string here, we need to take that one and that five to form 15. And so then once you find a two digit number from each line, you can sum those up and we get 142. So can we using TypeScript types alone solve this problem? The answer is totally yes. And let me walk you through the code that I came up with. So the first step in solving this problem is getting that first digit and second digit for each line and forming our two digit number. It's pretty simple to parse through a string and find the first number within it. What we can do is have a type here called first number, which takes a generic argument. Of course, we need to make sure that's a string. And then we can use the string literal type syntax to infer parts of that string. Specifically, this is introduced in a relatively recent version of TypeScript, I want to say five point something maybe, but it could have been four nine, not sure, where we can do infer and then we can say extends number. So we're saying that we expect something at the beginning of T to match a number and then we can just infer whatever for the rest of the string. So really this is a check to see if the first character of our string T is a number. And if it is, we found that number and so we can return F as our type here. Otherwise we can match that first character again and then match the rest of the characters. So we kind of are chopping off that first character by matching it to underscore here, which just means we don't care about it. And then we're gonna pass the rest of those characters into first number. So we're gonna recursively go down the line. If we can't match this second one, what that would mean is after the first character, there are no other characters. We can't infer two things because there are fewer than two characters in this word. And so if that's the case, we just return never. There is no number in this string. And we can actually see this at work if we do type X here, uh, first number, and maybe we pass it ASDF like this. We should see that X equals never. If we put a one in here, we can see that we get a one. Maybe that one is uh, somewhere else in here, or maybe it's not a one, it's a three. And we can see that we're inferring three. Now you might think it'd be really easy to create a last number type that does something similar. However, the tricky part there is saying we want a bunch of stuff and then the very last character to be a one. With this type of infer literal syntax, I don't see this documented anywhere, but it seems to be a non-greedy match. It seems to match as few characters as possible. And so we can't really say match everything except the last character. But what we can do is reverse the string so that the last number becomes the first number, and then we have our first number utility all ready to go. Reverse is pretty simple. We take a string, and then we're gonna do an infer again. We're inferring F for the first character, we're inferring the rest, and then our return type here is a string literal where we put that first character at the end and we reverse the rest of the list. So let's take a quick look at that in action. We can say reverse, and we should be able to see A, B, C, D, and as you can see, our type is D, C, B, A. So. Reverse is working just fine. And so to pull our two digits out of a given line, we could do something like this, where we do, um, let's make this a string literal, so we can say first number, and then first number, reverse. And so what we should get out of this, x should be one and three in a string form. Excellent, so now we have 13, but we have 13 as a string. And so we want to turn that string into a number. And that is what our to number type here does. It takes a string, and if it can infer that the entire string is some n that extends a number, we're gonna return that n, otherwise never. So we can wrap this call here into number. That's pretty simple. And if we look at x here, we can see now it's 13, not a string. So now we have everything we need to pull a two digit number from a single line of our input. And let's take a look at our final solution, which is solve day one, part one. 
notice that we take an argument here, which is any array, and we have this wrapper sum that I'm going to take off for the moment, just because we haven't discussed it yet. But if you notice the main piece of this is we've got K in key of A, so we're looping over every element in our A, which is an array, and then we have the type that we just saw. We're doing a two number on the first number and the first number of the reversed. So we've got those two characters that we're turning into a two digit number. And so now if we look at day one, part one solution, you can see that we have 12, 38, 15, 77 which does match exactly the input we can expect from this example. We are very close. We just need to know how can we sum up an array of numbers. All right, well, there are a couple of pieces that we need here. We kind of have to build some basic arithmetic pieces in TypeScript. So there are lots of blog posts and videos out there on this. I may even have talked about this before. Essentially, what we do is we treat the length of an array as its value, as a number. We kind of need to convert each one of these to an array of 12 items, an array of 38 items, an array of 15, and an array of 77. So the way we do this is with this of length type. Of length takes some number to create an array of that length. And as a second value here, which has a default parameter of an empty array, we take some array of t. And what we do is we say, does t extend an object that has a length of l? So we're saying, is t already a type of an array that has a length of l, l being our expected number, right? So for example, if l here is four and t is an empty array, t has a length of zero. So this is false. t is already of the length we care about, we just return t. Otherwise, we spread the value of t which is our array, and we add one more to it. So we add just any type works, so we're literally using any here. So again, if this is four and this is an empty array, then what we have here is a call where L is four, and then this literal array here is gonna be the length of T, which we just said is zero, plus one. So now it's one, right? And then if we go through this again, we're gonna have L is four, T is an array of one, T is not of length L, and so now we're gonna say of length four, where the literal we pass in here now has two elements because we're adding one more any. So this allows us to build up an array of length L. Then you can see in add here, it's pretty simple. We can take two numbers, A extends number, B extends number, and we take the length of, and we'll talk about length in a second here, but we take the length of an array which has length of A spread and then length of B spread. So if A is two, B is two, we're gonna spread two elements, two elements, of course that's four elements, and then we take the length of that. Now length is kind of the inverse of, of length, where length here takes an array, and we can actually say that T, our array, if it extends an object that has a length, and then we can infer that length. This is honestly mind blowing to me, the, type, the fact that TypeScript can infer L where it extends a number. So we're saying if it has a length property, that length is a number, then return L, otherwise never. And this allows us to go the other way, take an array with some number of elements and pull that length value out of it. With that, we have addition, and now summing is just looping over an array of numbers and performing that addition for each one. So sum takes an array of numbers, and then it also takes an accumulator, which defaults to zero. And the first thing we do is infer that there is a first number in this list, right? We find that F being our first number that extends a number, and then we can infer the rest of the array. So we're kind of popping off the front. I guess pop usually refers to the back. So we're shifting off the front. Now there's two things we could do here. We could be at the end of our list and there's nothing left, or we could have more numbers to go. So if this is the very last number, then we're going to do this right here. We're going to add our accumulator and F and we're going to return that and that's good to go. Now, if we're at a place where there aren't even, isn't even a first number in this list somehow, we're just going to return the accumulator. But in the case where rest does equal an array of numbers, right, where there are more numbers left to add, then we're going to recurse into our sum type again. Rest is, of course, the rest of the list and our accumulator is now the accumulator plus that first number. This is great for summing a list of numbers. We can do type X here and we can say sum and let's sum one, two, three, four. And what we can see X is now equal to the 10. With that in place, what we can do now is wrap our solve here in our sum. And if we hover over day one, part one solution, you can see we now have 142, which is the expected sum of these four lines of input. So there you go. This is solving day one, part one of Advent of Code 2023 in types alone. I tried pasting my full thousand lines of input into args here, but the type system just couldn't handle that much input, which I think totally makes sense. But for now, this is just a fun little exercise to see if you can do this in TypeScript. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you hopefully very soon.